Welcome to Attleboro Update. Every summer, communities across the nation have to find ways to minimize the spread of mosquito-borne diseases. The Attleboro Health Department recently teamed up with the Bristol Norfolk Medical Reserve Corps to hold a mosquito control information session at the Attleboro Public Library. There, entomologist Priscilla Madden spoke about the different types of mosquitoes, the diseases frequently transmitted by mosquitoes, and methods of disease prevention. To find out more about the event, we spoke with Ms. Matten about the presentation. So Bristol County Mosquito Control, our mission statement is to provide mosquito control both for nuisance and for vector control to reduce mosquitoes to a level that provides less annoyance to you while you're trying to enjoy your days outside. We try to be as sensitive as possible, so for that we use integrated pest management. My name is Priscilla Matten. I work for the Bristol County Mosquito Control Project, which is based in Taunton, Mass, but it services all 20 towns within Bristol County. And what I am is the entomologist for the project. So what I do is I set mosquito traps, I bring them back to the office, I identify them, count them out, and any of those that are important for West Nile virus and Tripoli, I'll submit them to the Department of Public Health for testing for both those viruses. So what I wanted to do was provide some information to the residents of Attleboro and whoever else was able to join us this evening about ways to protect yourself from mosquitoes and just a little bit of biology. So all mosquitoes require water in order to uh, grow and become adults. So any standing water that you have around your property that you can dump out, it will really help to reduce that right around your own property. And then talked about personal protection, different types of repellents you can use to help reduce like DEET, Picaridin, oil of lemon, eucalyptus, some of those things. And then I wanted to talk about some of the services that we offer to the residents within Bristol County. We talked a little bit about ticks because Lyme disease is really important and ticks have been a big issue the last couple of years. So we talked a little bit about how avoiding ticks uh, around your property, stay away from those edges right along your woods, and you want to stay within the paths if you're hiking or moving along some paths in the woods because uh, ticks don't jump and they don't fly. So the more that you can stay away from where they are along brush and along um, grasses, then the better off you are. And then if you get a tick, we want you to do tick checks. So look for ticks. Uh, if you find a tick on you, you want to use tweezers, get as close to the head as possible, and pull it straight out. You don't want to use any sort of other methods like smothering the tick in oils or jellies, like petroleum jelly, or um, anything like that, because that causes the tick to actually regurgitate more saliva, which is where the bacteria is found. So the more that she regurgitates as she's trying to back out uh, from being attached to you, then the greater your chances are of getting Lyme disease if the tick has it. The Department of Public Health uh, in Massachusetts has seen that there has been an increase in the amount of Lyme disease cases reported, so they really are trying to push uh, Lyme disease awareness and the amount of cases that there have been. Um, West Nile and Tripoli, the, it's been um, it's been quiet so far this year, but it's still very early. Last year was what we would consider to be more of a moderate year, um, so we'll have to just wait and see. Unfortunately, it's not something you can predict too well. A lot of it has to do with rain levels. So right now it's pretty dry, um, so there tends to be less mosquitoes without the water, of course. So once we start to get rain, we'll, we'll start to see what happens. There's no new diseases that occur and uh, live in Massachusetts, but the ones that we're concerned about are for those people that are traveling and may travel to areas in the Caribbean or Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic. Um, there's dengue, uh, which is in Florida as well, and then chikungunya which has been found in the Caribbean and in some of those other places that people just have to be aware of when they're traveling. Because a lot of times we don't think when we're going uh, on vacation to remember to bring insect repellent, but sometimes it's important. If a resident's interested in having their property sprayed, they can call our office. They can find our information on our website, with, which is BristolCountyMosquitoControl.com, and they can get our number. They can fax it in, or they can also email in a request. And uh, what we would do is we'd make an application by truck uh, from the road and we drive by your house and make an application and hopefully um, we would kill the mosquitoes that are present when the application takes place but it doesn't stick around in the environment so it's a non-residual so you will not get control for days um, you'll get some control but it may not last as long as you you may want it to do. Um, you can also be a registered no spray so if you didn't want your area sprayed you can also request that uh, requests are made through your town clerk 
before the 1st of March, which I know it's already past those dates, but if it's something that you feel strongly about, you can definitely call the office and we would put you on the no spray list and remind you to do it again the following year to help um, and we wouldn't make pesticide applications around your property. Our products are registered by the federal government and they are licensed for use and we follow the label on when we're making our application. All of our pesticides that we use are also approved by the Mass Pesticide Board, which is part of the Mass Department of Agricultural Resources. And then all of our applicators that work at Bristol County Mosquito Control are licensed pesticide applicators. So we go through a lot of steps to try to make sure that we make applications correctly. We're, we live in the area, we're just as concerned about you know, the environment as the next person. Um, we don't want to see a reduction in things like pollinators. That's why we make our applications when bees are not really active, which is uh, after um, dawn, we stop making applications, which is why you may see us go by between 2 a.m. and sunrise. And that's because we're trying to protect pollinators and uh, all these other non-targets that tend to come out later on in the mornings. Our information is on the website. Some of the services that we use about larviciding or treating standing water is there that people can call us and ask us questions. Um, they can call and make a request. And then just to take some personal protection, uh, long sleeves, long pants, so dress appropriately, uh, avoid dusk and dawn when mosquitoes are most active, wear DEET or another approved repellent. Remember to read the label to find which one's best for you. And then dump any standing water that you have around your property that uh, may be producing mosquito larvae.